here, Bolio. Got that. And he is an economist and the CEO of ITR Economics. And he just gave a wonderful presentation at the Executive Summit General Session, and we learned a lot. And I just kind of, you know, for our viewers here who weren't here today, can you just give us kind of a 60 second state of the current economy download? I'd be happy to. Thanks for having me here. I appreciate Thank you. it. The economy, uh, it's a mixed bag right now, but for our folks, our industry, it's good. The consumer's in a very good place. The consumer's out there spending money. Um, there was some hype made about uh, retail sales and general merchandise stores not doing well, but that's because we're buying more and more online. The consumer is in a great place. They're spending it. They've saved a lot of money. Um, employment is strong. What more do we want out of that than a happy consumer, right? Absolutely. The rest of it will come around. Yeah, for sure. Well, you have um, talked a little bit about you know that there may be a coming recession down the road. When will we see the next recession, and you know, more importantly, how bad will that be? When is far enough out in the future that you need to give me a little bit of latitude? Right. Here. It yeah, looks for like sure. <laughs> late 18, early 2019. Okay, so um, in about two to three. Two to three years, two and a half, okay. three years. Um, we have concerns. Uh, and the threats come from several different places from uh, problems in the Middle East are um, becoming an issue here in terms of our oil prices, to interest rates going up too high, to. Um, change in the guard of this presidential election that could stir the pot in terms of fiscal policy to such an extent that we have a little bit of pullback uh, in 2019. So there's a lot for us to keep our eye on. In terms of severity of the last four recessions, uh, this will rank as one of the mildest. That's so like 1990, 91 type. Uh, yeah, okay. it will be mild. So we're not looking at the proportions of the one we just came out of. Oh, no, 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 that great recession. Yes. Uh, we don't see that happening again uh, for at least 14, 15 years. That's great. Good news. <laughs> yes. So, and my last question is, you know, there's been a lot of talk about the millennial market and their importance, you know, clearly as a huge consumer market and coming into the marketplace even stronger. What are the characteristics of today's millennial workforce and how are they different? from previous generations. You use the word workforce, so I'm going to confine myself. Yes, to the working millennium. <laughs> <laughs> um, they have less money to spend. Right. Uh, they have awful credit scores as a demographic. Uh, so Why it, is that, that they have the bad credit? They, or they just don't have it built up a They credit. haven't built up a credit history, right. and they are carrying a fair amount of student loan debt because uh, Compared to prior generations, few of them wanted, wanted to work while they were going through school. So they're going to come out of school carrying a lot more debt. In terms of today's workforce, and let me be perfectly clear, they work hard. They're very smart. They look for they're, they're not at all happy working the sort of hours that prior generations have worked when they first came into the workforce. That right. They have a, an idea, a very firm idea, of what the work-life balance should be like, and they expect their employers to abide by their perception of the work-life balance and us previous generations we need to find a way to help them become so productive that um, they're worth all the money that we're spending all the uh, personal time off that they're taking um, and at the same time tapping into their talents and, right. and their abilities and within that the, the interest of them, you know, the generation to kind of keep that work-life balance and maybe only work 40 hours a week as opposed to, you know, the 60 hours that previous generations might have put in. Yeah, probably. yeah, exactly. Um, a young woman today, a millennial, said, you know, how can you say that we don't work hours? So for the last three days I worked at a pace that's 45 hours a week. Like, mm -hmm. clearly that means that that was an exceptional amount of time, sure. whereas I mean, it's not a big deal. Exactly. But for certain segments of the new workforce, right. it is a big, deal, is a big deal, and we need to adjust to that. And and to some extent, maybe that's a healthier mindset, you know, to be able to put time in in some ways. Some. Maybe so. <laughs> maybe I love so. the optimism. To be determined. Anywhere. Yes, I am an optimist. <laughs> anyway, well, thank you so much for taking the time. Have a great trip. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>